Let me get to my standout performance, Quentin. Thank you for your input. Mine, uh, this was kind of an easy one. For me, I have some ties in the city of Minneapolis, and we saw Kenta Maeda just go do it. Eight, no, no. He looks nasty. Jim, he threw this one pitch to um, Keston Hira. It was like a slider that rose. And if you want to go check that highlight out, people will go check it out. It's the weirdest pitch I've ever seen. Keston Hira looked like he didn't know what just happened. But he had the split working with him. He had 12 Ks through eight. And then Sogard comes up and bloops one in to ruin it. But Maeda looked great. That's exactly what the Twins needed. And if they want to be a legitimate World Series contender, Kenta's got to step it up. Barrios has to step it up. And both of them did it this week. Kenta was lights out. I really was rooting for him to get that no-hitter. Um, everybody raves about him, how good of a guy he is there. And he kind of exemplifies like that joy that you want to see guys have when they play the game. He was very happy with his start. Obviously, Maeda. Great job. What do you think about the bloop? We talked about this on John Boy and Jake Radio as well the next day. I I think two out of ten times that gets caught. Um, I, th- I You know, I think if he catches it, we're saying, that's the play. You yeah. know, every no-hitter has a play. But I saw a lot of people saying it 100% should have been caught. I don't mm. know. You know, they were shifted. And, look, if you took – if he started one step back, yeah, he would have caught it. But that's the game of baseball, man. Yeah, like and it's like a it's like a bloop. It's hard to get like a perfect read on those bloops, right? It also was coming right at him. So when the ball a line drives coming right at you like that, and that was you know a full swing, but he got jammed or hit it off the end. I'm not sure which one, but it's it's coming a lot slower. Mm. So it's just a difficult read for a guy, and straight at you is tough because you can't break and pivot one way back. You have to just go straight. It's tough to do that as yeah. an infielder. Yeah, whatever, right. whatever. Still good a good job. start. Good job, but I liked his little shimmy. It sucks he goes from no hitter to no decision. <laughs> oh, you did like that little shimmy, didn't you? That's yeah, fine. Uh, you know, man, I, I, how many times has that happened, dude? Like, you know, you get into that ninth inning, it just seems like it's like. I wanted, I out. wanted to do a, I wanted to do a breakdown, but it's a lot of work. Uh, maybe once if I have a team to find it, because I think the casual baseball fan doesn't know that if a guy has a no hitter or a perfect game going in like the eighth or ninth inning. As soon as like he gives up that first one, it unravels. Like yes. I don't know the percentage, but like as a, as a as a baseball fan, we watch it and like, oh no, take him out because like it's gonna unravel now. I think the casual or or new baseball fan would be like, well, he's still fine. He's still having a really good game, but like baseball fans know like, oh, you got to get him out because it's gonna unravel. Well, so, they did take him out and then it did unravel. I know, so. but it's 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 very it's you know it's yeah. it's just a it's a weird mindset that we have because we've seen it that I think the average non-baseball mind would be like, wait, what? That's a thing? Like, yeah, it's a thing. It's like on the offensive side, it's like someone's been holding your head underwater and you finally get a you know, a little bit of air and you can breathe again and then boom, it kind of opens the, the yeah. floodgates up there. But uh, that was a weird one. They they tied it on an air. 